Hey YouTube, let's continue our discussion of abstract algebra. Today we're going to talk about groups. So first let's look at the definition of a group. So definition. So a group is a set is a set G with star a binary operation on G a binary operation on G such that the following three conditions hold so the first condition is that star is an associative binary operation. So star is associative. We often refer to this as the associativity property. So associativity. Associativity. Two. There exists an element which will denote uh, by the letter lowercase e, which lives inside G, such that when you take G on the left and you star it with e, that's the same thing as e star G, and that's the same thing as G. This is called the identity element, and this has to be true for all little g and capital G. This is often referred to as the existence of an identity element. So existence of an identity element. Identity element. And three, for every little g in capital G, we can find some little h in g such that if you compute g star h that's the same thing as h star g and it's equal to your uh, identity element. This is denoted as the existence of inverses so people often refer to this as the existence of inverses. So a group is just a set, G, with star a binary operation, where you have associativity, the existence of an identity element, and the existence of inverses. So just a couple uh, remarks, well maybe just one remark. Um, G is non-empty, so by two, we have E residing inside G. So G is a non-empty set. Okay, so uh, a group is required to be non-empty by the second criteria, existence of uh, the identity element. So E, this guy here, is called the identity element of G. Let me go ahead and write that down. Identity element of G. And H, this H here that appears in 3, this is called uh, the inverse. This is the inverse of G and G in 3. So every element has an inverse. It's easy to prove that the identity element is unique and that all inverses are also unique. As far as notation, um, we tend to use uh, the notation G, the parentheses, and a comma and star. So G is the set and star is the binary operation. Um, if star is understood, so if star is understood, we simply use G. So we simply use G. So we'll use this when necessary, and if we know what star is, then we'll, we'll, we'll just call it G. 
Let's look at some examples of groups, some of the most simple ones. So example. So if we take G to be the set of integers under addition. So plus here denotes regular addition. So this is a group, right? This is a group, and let's talk about why. So the first condition is that uh, addition is associative, and that's, that's pretty clear. So plus is associative. So associativity is satisfied. Two, uh, the identity element in this set uh, is zero. So zero is the identity element. Zero is the identity element. I'll just say ELT. And this is since if you take um, zero plus n, that's equal to n plus 0, and that's equal to n, and this is true for all little n in capital Z. So 0 is indeed the identity element. And 3, if you take a integer, an integer n in Z, then negative n is also an integer, so it also resides inside Z, and it is the inverse. It is the inverse of little n. And this is because uh, if you add them, you get the identity element. So if you take n plus negative n, you get 0. And likewise, if you take negative n plus n, you also get 0. So negative n is the inverse of little n. So for each little n in z, we have an inverse element. So we have an associative binary operation, we have the existence of the identity element, and we have the existence of inverses. So this is an example of what's called a group. Likewise, likewise, um, well, let's go ahead and restate this one. So this one is a group, right? The set of integers under addition. The set of rational numbers under addition is also a group. The set of real numbers under addition is also a group. And furthermore, the set of complex numbers under addition is also a group. So all are groups. So all of these guys are all groups, all groups. Let's look at another example. Say we take the set of natural numbers under addition. And by natural numbers, we mean positive integers. So here. Some books differentiate. Some books allow uh, 0 to be a natural number, so we'll say that it's not. So we'll take n to be the set of natural numbers starting with 1. And this is not a group, so it is not a group. And the reason it's not a group um, is because there is no identity element. So there is no identity element identity element, right? There is no identity element in the set of natural numbers. Let's look at another example. What if we decide to take the set of natural numbers and add 0 to it? So then we're left with this set. And let's look at this set under addition. This is still not a group, so this is not a group. Because if 0 is your identity, well, then it's not a group because the numbers 1, 2, 3, and so on, none of these numbers, none of the non-zero numbers have inverse elements. So because these guys do not have inverses. Right, so even if you add 0 to the natural numbers, um, it still fails to be a group. It's not enough to make it a group because then all of your non-zero natural numbers um, don't, don't have inverses. Let's look at another example. Lots of examples. Uh, it's important to see lots of examples of groups. Let's look at the rational numbers under multiplication. So here star is just regular multiplication. 
multiplication. And this is not a group, so it is not a group, not a group, because 0 has no inverse, right? Because 0 has no inverse, right? The identity element here would be 1, right? So 1 would be your identity element under multiplication. Uh, but there's no number that you can multiply by 0 um, that will give you 1, right? That's not possible. So 0 uh, does not have an inverse uh, in, this, in this set. Here's another example. Let's say we take q star under, and I'm going to use a dot this time. And so the dot here is multiplication. I should have used a dot in the above example for clarity. So q star here, q star, this is equal to the rational numbers minus 0, so set minus 0. So this is a group. This is a group. So if you take the rational numbers and you throw away the number 0 and your binary operation is multiplication, then you do have a group. Let's just talk about the conditions. So 1, um, multiplication is associative. So it is an associative binary operation on the set of rational numbers. 2, 1 is the identity element, right? 1 is the identity element. I'll just say ELT. And this is because Q times 1 is equal to Q, and 1 times Q is equal to Q. And this is true for all little Q and Q star. Right, take any number and multiply it by 1 and you get that number again. Right, You get that number again. And 3, if Q is in Q star, then it's not 0, right? Because Q star uh, does not allow the number 0 to live inside it. So then 1 over Q is also in Q star, right? Because it's a rational number. And it exists, right? You're not dividing by 0. Then this guy is the inverse of Q. Because if you take Q and you multiply it by 1 over Q, you simply get 1. Likewise, if you take 1 over Q and multiply it by Q, you also get 1. I hope this video has helped. Uh, I guess I'll stop it here, and in the next video, hopefully, we'll look at some more examples of groups. That's it.